Speaker placement can have a drastic impact on your frequency response, but where you place your speakers is going to depend on a lot of factors, such as the size and shape of your room, whether or not you're using a subwoofer, and your own personal preference. Just looking at a speaker, we might infer that all of the sound is projected out of the front face. This is mostly true for the higher frequencies, but lower frequencies radiate in a sphere around the speaker, meaning that they can create reflections and pressure zones on any of the surfaces directly surrounding them. This is where the concept of speaker boundary interference response comes into play. Just like how the first reflections off of our sidewall can cause interference, the reflections off of the front wall, sidewall, and floor can also cause issues directly surrounding the speaker. No matter the distance from the speaker to the wall, there will always be phase interference in the frequencies that correspond to that distance. So any distance between your speaker and your wall will create phase cancellation at one-fourth the wavelength. This is because after the sound reflects off the wall back to the speaker position, it has traveled one half the wavelength and arrives at the sound source 180 degrees out of phase with the original sound. At one half the wavelength to the wall, the sound travels the full length of the wave, so it's completely in phase when it bounces back to the speaker. There are a few different strategies to mitigating these effects. Many high-end studios build their speakers into the walls to eliminate the extra reflections altogether, but this isn't always an option for those with budget or space constraints. One common solution is to bring your speakers out four feet or more from the front and side walls. This will ensure that the phase interference occurs in lower ranges that can be rerouted through your subwoofer instead of your front speakers. This isn't always a viable strategy in smaller rooms, and it requires that you have a subwoofer that works at a high enough frequency to pick up where your stereo monitor is cut off. It also, you'll need to deal with the speaker boundary interference from your subwoofer as well. The further the speaker is from the wall, the lower the affected frequencies. So pulling the speaker out far enough to place acoustic treatment behind it often causes interference to dip below the effective range of the panel. If we can place the speakers far enough out that the interference is mostly below the audible range, then we can treat behind the speakers with soffits or range-limited monsters to clean up the rest. For smaller rooms, it's better to place the speaker as close to the front wall as possible without actually touching it. This will minimize any speaker boundary interference that you have, and then you can focus treatment around the speaker. No matter where you place your speakers, you'll want to avoid having the same distance between multiple surfaces. If the distances between the speaker, the sidewall, the front wall, and the floor are all the same, then the same peaks and nulls will manifest from all sets of reflections, which will in turn then stack and create even larger peaks and nulls. Speaker boundary interference response can be a very messy subject, so feel free to take these guidelines and experiment with your speaker placement and treatment options until you get what works right for you. As always, you can visit us on our website where you can find tons of useful tools and articles as well as our free consultation form where you can get free acoustic advice tailored to your room. Get free acoustic advice. Visit GIKacoustics.com for educational articles and tutorials.